Hello fellow history nuts. Welcome to another episode of History in a Flash. Today I'm going to be talking about William Wallace, which is really super cool to me because I think he was just someone who is really awesome. And doesn't Mel Gibson look so hot painted up like that? <sighs> Maybe it's just the Scottish in me. Anyway, back on topic, I think it's time that we got to mentioning some facts about our awesome mate, William. And I'm not going to talk off street because I'm not straight. William Wallace was born sometime in the first part of the 1270s, though very little is known about exactly when or where he was born. Some say it was 1272, but a book that was printed in the 16th century seems to suggest 1276. So his age varies somewhat depending on source. He was the son of Alan Wallace of Ayrshire, though it was only verified in 1999 when the Wallace seal was discovered. Up until that point, people thought he was the son of Malcolm Wallace, who was a knight and a landowner. Though in recent years, they've come to think that maybe Alan and Malcolm are like the same person and that he's just one of those dudes that went by his middle name. I guess we'll never know. Maybe someone should ask Mel. Sorry, back on topic. Despite many people claiming Braveheart is very historically inaccurate, which it probably is in many ways, it did help resurrect the legend of William Wallace to people outside of Scotland. Up until then, people other than scholars and the Scottish people didn't really know who he was. So the next time you're watching Braveheart and telling Mel what a bad job he's doing, maybe don't tell him what a bad job he's doing. Not that anyone would ever do that, ever. William was a younger son, so he was actually expected to go into the church, but he saw all the injustice and everything, and I guess he just wanted to stand up to all that oppression that he saw his people being put under. And as a Scotsman, he was renowned as a hero by the English. He was a rebel. He was a traitor, a murderer. King Edward I really hated him. Well, I suppose you would hate someone who wasn't blindly loyal to you after you took everything from them. Bit of a strange concept. The average height of a man in the Middle Ages was about five foot six, so my height, which would make me not feel like such a pipsqueak alongside all of the men that I live with. Um, but old William was six foot seven, which would definitely make me feel like a pip squeak. I'm sure he was handsome though. I mean, sure there's no portraits existing of him and it's not like anyone is still around from the 1200s, but people said he was cheerful in appearance. I'm assuming that's like the same thing as handsome and people don't just say this stuff. So, <laughs> the first act that we definitely can attribute to William Wallace was the murder of William Hesselrig, who was the High Sheriff of Lanark, and this happened in May of 1297. Soon afterwards, he joined William the Hardy, Lord of Douglas, and they carried out the Raid of Sconce. This would be the first of many rebellions, and it was kind of the start of William Wallace's you know, reign as rebel. Because on the 11th of September 1297 came one of the most famous battles of William's career, the Battle of Stirling Bridge. I'm on the edge of my seat. Tell me more. I'd love to tell you I'm not normally this weird, but that would be a lie. William and his partner Andrew Murray stood against an army that was so much larger than their own and they still beat them and they weren't expected to win and they did I think it really says something it's it's something that really speaks about the Scottish spirit that's my opinion on it and so William and Andrew became guardians of Scotland and they were through with the English forever and ever right 
1298, William relinquished his position as guardian of Scotland and spent the next seven years hiding from Edward I. He managed to evade capture until the 5th of August 1305, when an English knight loyal to Edward I named John the Menteith finally caught him and brought him in. When he was put on trial, Edward I said to him, You are a traitor. And Wallace looked at him and said, How can I be a traitor? I was never loyal to you in the first place. Which, I think, it's so true, isn't it? You know, it was. And sadly, I'm afraid this brings an end to the tale of William Wallace, the Scottish rebel. <sighs> because after that, they found him guilty of treason. And they hung, drew, and quartered him in the worst way possible. He was strangled by hanging, but released while he was still alive. They emasculated him and disemboweled him and burnt his bowels before him. And only then did they behead him and cut him into four parts. I think it was torture at torture's peak. It was Edward's way of saying just how much he truly hated this man. I don't think there's any justification for it in any way, shape or form, but that's my two cents. I really don't. After that they dipped his head in tar and stuck it on a spike on London Bridge. No, just the old deterrent for any wannabe rebels who uh, were trying to, you know, go against the king. Not something they wanted anyone else to give a go. His brother's heads ended up there next to him later on, I guess, that, uh, you know, runs in the family and Edward knew how to hold a grudge. But anyway, that's a story for another day. And that is all for today. I hope that you have enjoyed this little episode about William Wallace. I have certainly enjoyed talking about him. And, uh, thank you for watching. I have tried to be as accurate as I possibly could, but... As with all things history, sometimes things are contested, and I'm not a historian, so again, did my best, hope you liked it, and that is Happy History Not Out and Off Like a Dirty Shirt. Have a splendid first day. You know, come to think of it, I'm a bit put off him, after all, the whole red beard thing doesn't really do it for me.